close that one. Leave that one open because this one's live. I have two windows open. I have 14 on already. Guess what I'm doing to Greg? She's I can't, controlling I'm, me. It might be. I hope it's not too slow because if I hit end stream on this one, it's going to end the other one. Eh. Cancel. I think it's hopefully it's not too slow. It seems I have it open in two windows. Hi. <laughs> you found it, Carl? Come sit down. I'm reading. <laughs> I didn't finish his hair in time. So I'm fixing Greg's hair. Who are you, Greg? I'm the person being tortured by Karen. <laughs> Just a little bit. Are you cool? You have a beautiful sweater on. You have to show it off. Carl's mom knits, and she's Norwegian, so you know what that means. It's like in their jeans. See? You look so good. <laughs> no, no, that's that's not showing off. You've got to stand up and you've got to go twirling around and around and I around need to see and your around. Too. Yes, I was considering doing that, but if I stand up, you will only see. <laughs> oh no, I like this view. Turn around. <laughs> I'm not sure everyone else would like the view. <laughs> It's an acquired taste. I'll give you that. I've acquired it. Do it again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, what do you do in the village? <clears throat> Apparently, get tortured. Uh, get tortured. <laughs> especially if I've left my hair in braid for weeks and weeks and months. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Carl, what do you do in the village? Get tortured too? Uh, rarely. We found out we can't braid you, though, because you look like Steven Seagal. Mm hmm. Not good. Uh, he looks really like Steven Seagal. And Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> That's only with the beauty filters. Pocahontas, uh, yeah, I was Pocahontas say. with the beard. No. <laughs> He's not going for it. Okay. What on earth what does he do look do? like without his beard? I mean, that photo the other day. Yeah, we saw a video. Gudvang and Market 2013. If you catch, if you're really quick around minute four, I think it's part one. Minute four, you can see Carl without a beard. It's very disturbing. It's it's a little creepy. You have to keep that now. <laughs> so what do you do, Carl? I'm a guide uh, most of the time. A Viking guide. And Greg, you're a Viking guide too when you're not being tortured. Yes, I am indeed. <laughs> Primarily uh, mythology, I would mm -hmm. say. <laughs> So we did work. You guys are so good. We're getting better at getting chat, which is really great. And a lot of questions. So by the way, write them in now. Uh, but we can't keep up with them. So if you notice, Peruta's, got, Peruta's name is Blue. So Peruta will capture the questions and send them to me on the phone. She's got moderator status there now. Uh, and then we'll be able to at least make sure we don't miss the questions. But keep chatting because I think it's great to see you guys talking to each other as well. Absolutely. And then you also people like Ann Decker and lots of other people in there, too, that uh, really know their stuff, too. So when they're answering your questions, definitely listen up. Um, but there's one other thing we didn't get around to last week, and it wasn't just all the questions. It was also your story. So we're going to have you tell your story immediately. So this is the real reason why she's pulling my hair, so that if I say no, I'm not going to do a story, uh, then she's going to... Pull my hair like that. Meanwhile, that doesn't sound like a story coming out of your mouth. I just want to point that out to you. Okay, what story shall I tell? Mm. Has remember, anyone got any... Huh? What, Carl? Just remember that she has the power to make you look like Russell Crowe at the end of... Um, he looks good! <laughs> at okay. the end of Monster and Commander, if she wants to. <laughs> <laughs> With a little bow. <gasps> Alex, can you find me some ribbons? No. So we can put them in Greg's hair. Where have they been? Darn it. Okay. <laughs> My kids are here, by the way. Thank God. No you guys ribbons. can pop out later. They turn 12 tomorrow. Okay. Story 12. time. It's not a good age. <laughs> Does anyone have any requests for stories? You have to look at the chat. I can't see it from here. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the yeah. chat. I can read it. We're not doing Greek with mythology because I don't know. I didn't call it Greek needle binding. You have to do your own channel for that. <laughs> But um, just need which ones have you told anyway, just to catch back? Yeah, that, that's what I'm trying to remember. You did Odin. Yeah, I've done Odin for certain. You did Ymir. The story yeah, Ymir. I'm pretty sure I did the story of the Brissinger's necklace. Yep. You yeah. also did one about Balder. Yes, yes, um, I did. 
Did you do um, Hafti? Scotty. Scotty, I think. I'm fairly certain I did Scotty. You did the sun and the moon and the beautiful lady. Yes, area. I definitely did that one. Uh, Thor's fishing trip. Yes, yep, Thor's fishing trip. So if you haven't cut back, you have to go back and look at old episodes and you'll see them. I'm not sure if I've done the story of Klausia. Klausia might be good. Okay, you're done. <clears throat> oh, maybe I should tell the story of Krasia and the Mead of Poetry then. You get to snuggle up to Greg and I'll snuggle up to you. Because <laughs> if you sit, if I sit in the middle, you get stabbed with the needle binding needle. Yeah, that's true. We probably get stabbed by a needle binding needle anyway. But, uh... Shh, don't ruin my plans. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At least she doesn't have the pretext of pretending it was not on purpose. It was definitely on purpose. <laughs> Okay. okay, I can actually move this closer. Carl, you're sitting in a hole there. Hi! So, the story <laughs> of Crassia. Well, this story actually goes back to near the beginning of Asgard and the Gods, because this comes right after the war between the Aesir and the Vanir. Uh, for those who haven't seen the story I've told about the war between the two families, I will just briefly mention a little of it. So with regards to the Aesir and Vanir, the Vanir and the Aesir are two different godly families. One family, the Vanir, have gods such as Frey, Freya, Njord, and many others like that. Whereas the Aesir family has some of the ones more people have heard of, Odin, Thor, and so on. And for a long time they're at war because Odin wants to be king, and the other family says, well, why should we have to bow down to you? We're as powerful, if not more so. And so this led to generations of war, which eventually was a, a truce was called to try and stop this from happening and more God's lives being lost. That's a very, very brief version yeah. of it. And when they decide to actually have this pact, the all of the gods who agree with this pact spit into a cauldron. And then the Aesa gods whip this cauldron away, and from the spit, they actually create a new god. They form him from clay in the spit, and this god is called Crassia. I have uh, Cecilia saying how disgusting this is. You in can the wave, background. Cecilia. <laughs> I'll turn it to you. See how disgusted she looks over there? <laughs> she turns 12 soon. Okay. And so they form this new person. Now, because of all of the gods who have put their uh, effectively essence into creating him through their spit, he actually turns out to be an extremely wise, talented, and gifted god. So much so that wherever he goes, people stop and ask him questions. And he almost never has a wrong answer. So he's a very, very, very good god for advice and so on and so forth. And two particularly nasty dwarves, they decide that they want to have his gift for their own, but of course they can't just steal the gift. So they come up with a cunning plan, as a certain Baldrick might say, uh, to lure Krasia to them so that they can try and stop all of his good fortune and good information and so on coming out. And so he comes to a great party that these two dwarves, Fjala and Gala, create. And they have very good time. Everybody's asking Krasia lots of questions. And then at the end of the party, the two dwarves ask him to stay around a little bit afterwards for a nightcap. And everyone else is left, and the first thing they do is they kill Krasia. And once they have killed him, they collect his blood into two, a massive cauldron and two great pots. And they then mix his blood with honey and brew it with uh, the honey and hops and so on, and they create some mead from this. And whoever drinks this mead gains the knowledge, the wisdom, the arts of Krasia. But Fjalla and Gala are quite smart themselves, or at least they're cunning. And so they don't tell anyone 
that they have done this. So they keep all the mead for themselves and occasionally have a sip from this. Bear in mind they're basically drinking the blood of a god. This is another area where Cecilia is uh, very, very disgusted at uh, what the gods did, or at least these dwarves. <laughs> and so this becomes the mead of poetry. But like I say, Fiala and Gala don't tell anyone, and they just keep it. And one day they invite a giant couple to their dwelling, and the giant couple effectively overstay their welcome. They're not a particularly nice couple for the dwarves to have around. And so the dwarves, they decide to lure out the husband into the middle of the lake and then shove him off into the water. And this giant can't uh, swim. Incidentally, giant is a race. It is not determining the height of a being. And so because he can't swim, he drowns. And the dwarves come back and they explain to the wife that they had unfortunately run aground on a rock and he had been uh, catapulted off into the water. And unfortunately, even though they had tried their best, they could not save him. Well, she ends up wailing and is very distraught. And Fiala says to his brother Gala, he says, get her to look out the door. And I will do something about this. And so they get Fiala get or Gala even gets her to look out the door by saying, Come, I can at least show you where your husband lies. And so she comes to the door and she looks out, and Fiala drops a great big millstone on her head, killing her as well. So both giants are now dead. Unfortunately, they have a son. And I say unfortunately because it's only unfortunate for the dwarves. And their son turns up and they explain to the son how unfortunately both his parents had died and so on and so forth. But the excuse they give is not believed for one second. So the giant grabs the two of them and hauls them out into the middle of the lake. And he is a very tall giant. And he keeps striding out until he is waist deep. Now, this would mean no way were the dwarves getting back to land without swimming. And they can't swim either. And he puts them on a rock in the middle of the fjord and turns to leave. And this rock, when the tide comes in, will be underwater so they'll both drown. And they shout out to him, no, please don't leave us here. What can we do? And... He says, nothing, I'm going to leave you here to drown. And they look at each other and grimace and they say, well, what if we give you our greatest treasure? And they tell the giant's son what they had done to Kvasia. And the giant agrees that if they give him this, him this treasure, that being mead, he will deign to allow them to live. So he takes them back. He takes the cauldron and the two pots and he strides back to his uh, to his home and he tasks his daughter to look after the pots of mead. But he is not as careful with who he tells. In fact, he's a bit of a blabbermouth. So he tells everybody that he has the mead. And of course, this gets back to the gods who have been wondering for quite some time what has happened to Gracia. When they learn what happens, they are outraged, but even more, they are terrified of what Mead will be able to do in the wrong hands. And so Odin changes his shape and he goes to the, uh, to the giant's brother and asks him, or at least the plan is to try and find out a way to get to the cauldron and the rest of the Mead. And as he's going to the brother, he actually comes across a group of slaves, Threls, working in the fields. And they are not doing very well because they have very blunt instruments and they're very upset because they're not treated very well. And so Odin offers to sharpen one of their uh, scythes for gathering grain, should they tell him what he needs to know. 
And so they tell him, and or one of them tells him, and he sharpens the scythe. And everybody else sees the whetstone, and they all want it because of how brilliantly this has made the scythe nice and sharp. And he says, I tell you what, if you're able to catch the whetstone, then you can have it. And so he flips it up in the air, and they're all trying to get it, and they're all trying to get it so badly that they end up killing each other with the bluntish scythes that they have. And so the giant comes down, or the giant's brother comes down, sees all his slaves are dead, and he's very upset because he can't get his harvest done in time. And so Odin offers to help him. And obviously the giant doesn't know it's Odin, but he offers to help. And Odin is able to gather all the crop and so on. And he asks that his only payment be to get to the mead, to have some of this mead. And the giant says to him, oh, well, I, I can't do that. Uh, I don't have any access to it at all. My brother is the one who has it. And so Odin says, well, can you at least talk to your brother to ask him to ha have me have a look and have a taste of it? And he says, well, I will ask, but that is all I can promise. Anyway, Odin does a very good job. And so the giant asks his brother if, uh, if this man can have a taste of the mead. And he says, no, slams the door in his face. So Odin then obviously still has no access to the mead. But he demands he be paid in full. He's done a very good job for this giant. So why shouldn't he have some reward? So the giant agrees to try to get Odin access to the mead, which is at the bottom of the mountain. And so this giant, he actually uses an a land all to screw into the mountain to get Odin access. But he doesn't drill deep enough, and so Odin can't get to it still. But he persists and he demands that the giant help him. And so eventually he's able to actually drill all the way through into the chamber where the mead is kept. And so Odin goes down and he meets the daughter of the giant guarding the mead and Odin talks to her now bearing in mind she's been guarding this mead for eons so she or at least decades and so she is rather fed up of having no one to talk to and so Odin turns his charm onto maximum and is able to woo her into such that they spend three nights together after which she is so besotted with Odin that she agrees to allow him to have a draft from each of the cauldron and the two pots. And so Odin takes his first draft and empties the cauldron. And he takes his second two drafts and empties both of the other pots as well. Then he turns himself into bird form and flies as fast as he can back to Asgard. And he's almost at Asgard when the girl's father learns of this and also gives chase to Odin in bird form himself. But he fails miserably in catching up with Odin. And so Odin goes over the walls of Asgard and spits the mead out into cauldrons or a massive cauldron that the uh, gods had laid out for Odin to do this. And this is how the gods manage to get back the mead of poetry. The giant gives a tremendous call because he's in bird form, so he can't shout, and returns back to his dwelling. And this mead is still kept by the gods. And on occasion, they grant their most favoured a taste of this. And this is how some mortals gain tremendous gifts of poetry, arts, and so on and so forth. Although how much I would like to drink it, considering it's made mm -hmm. of blood and it's also been in the mouth of Odin, I'm not sure, but that's another thing altogether. Cecilia, disgusted face. <laughs> anyway, that was a fairly long story, but that was okay. to try and make up for the fact that there wasn't one for the last couple of weeks. Oh, that's perfect, though. But uh, we also got some pretty good series. You got, you got kid feedback, too. 
Mm. No, so that was really good. They also wanted to know a little bit about trolls. The first trolls? is a, oh yeah, if we had any troll stories, but are trolls from Viking trolls or is that just after normal? Viking age. Yeah. Norse folklore, but after Viking age. Do a troll face, Carl. Mm. You do a really good troll face. Do I? Yeah, like an ogre thing. That's a pretty good troll. No. Mm -hmm. There! <laughs> Can you guys do troll faces? Hello. Do troll face. I already look like a troll. So I don't need to do anything. Troll, trolls aren't cool. I can. I can't do it. You have to like, you know. Yo, there you go. That's the one. It's also his orc face. <laughs> uh, no, I did not knit the Norwegian sweater. It, uh, Carl's mommy. I can knit it, but this is why I needle bind instead of knitting. I have two of these. <laughs> Ta -da. I have two, one for each hand, but for some reason knit and crochet will have me wearing those in no time flat, but uh, needle binding on the other hand doesn't. I think it's because you can change up if you're pulling this way, pulling this way, but um, you can change it up a bit uh, because it's repetitive motion syndrome. Maybe you should show them the little project I've given you. Oh, the are you going to make the, you have the little Yoda thing? Yeah. yeah. They know what the Yoda baby Yoda looks like, the crochet yeah. pattern. So there's a little okay. one that's in a ball and a keychain if you want to look mm -hmm. it up. That one's good to see. So first I'll say hi to everybody. We got lots here. Um, Dre is here. Let's see. She want to know if YouTube ever tells anyone what the stream will begin in two hours and then two hours later it's another two hours away. It's happened to her a few times. I don't actually know because I'm not really signed. Have you guys said that? No, I, I don't hmm. It might be a time zone change. It could just be that they change the time too, if it's possible. So Charlotte is here too, and Dora and Peruta and Drea and Bonnie, uh, Karsten. Yeah, let's see who else we have here. Nell's here, Alda's here. I'll cover this, Adrian, or um, Adrian, I think. Or Albert, one of the two. Uh, and Heidi Lisa is here. Runa was going to maybe, maybe not come. I'm assuming it's too cold. It's minus 14 now and minus 23 where you guys live. Uh, well, it wasn't minus 23 when I left, but it was minus 15 when I left. So with Oh, well, that's just like be... balmy temperatures now. Well, I, know, <laughs> I know, but uh, mm -hmm. I expect it to be minus 22 by the time I yeah. get home. Yeah. Uh, Sophie's here from the UK. Doro as well. Uh, Susan Youngman. And Prime Genesis, if I remember right, his name is Raymond. Uh, he also answered a question that Drea had. Drea wrote, null binding hats when starting from the top. That extra tail that is pulled tight, do I just tie a knot anywhere and then weave in the tail? Or is it a specific way? So Prime Genesis wrote on there a way that he does it, which is pretty much the same as I am. By the way, thanks for recommending my patterns. So here is my tail. And this is the middle. If I pull the middle tight, you get like these little loops in the middle. I just run it under there in the same direction the yarn is going. Where's your ice coffee? Where's your ice coffee? I can't believe you mentioned ice coffee to Carl. Now he's going to be whining. No, he doesn't have any down here. No. So I just run it through those loops about a total of two or three times around. And then I just cut. I don't even tie a knot. But I haven't had a problem yet. I just kind of keep running it through these loops. You adopted. And then it's good. You abducted so that you don't make guys. That. That's how I do it. You, you can tie it on if you want to. You just basically want to make sure it doesn't become Carl. undone. Hmm. Ta da! Wouldn't I say no to that question whether it was true or not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lindsay's here. Turun is here. And Lizbeth is here. Steinauger is here. So hey, hello, say hello if you haven't. If you looked in there, everybody wrote their temperatures too and where they're from, so we all know. We are in Norway, of course. Uh, right now, I am making wrist warmers for Carl. I'm not done yet because he wanted them really long. How long are you having them? Show. I have a ways to go. You can put them on and show how long you want them. Because he's freezing. Me too. Feel my hands. You cold? No, no, but we're outside. outside. Oh, I'm in the outside. Okay. I'm not cold. You're cold. Yeah. You want him. Yeah? So he's getting close. Hold up. Don't take it off yet. No. I'm not done using you. No. So the next thing I'll do is go to here. And then when I get this part, that's where I'll put the thumb on. And I'm making these. 
for him, but he wanted longer. What my friend was wondering who we subscribed to. I have no idea. I... No, no, you can take it. I mean, anyway, so that's how far I'll go. So then I'll do the thumb now. But I can. I did say I was going to show the thumb, but I got ahead of myself. Okay, you don't have to have it on anymore. I'm done torturing you. Mm -hmm. I have a. Oh, and Heidi from Horton is here too. I have a task. Yeah. That we might, or I might ask your help with yep. uh, later. I'm. No, I'm making cake. Yeah, I know that. That's, that's another <laughs> task for me specifically. Greg has I to know. make birthday cake because I can't bake. And I can't either. I can bake. Yeah. I'm just too lazy. <laughs> you shouldn't have to make your own birthday cake. I did yeah. that one year, so I. No. <laughs> Don't tell them that. That's what <laughs> I've been doing that every year. They have to make their own cake. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you had a plan, you said. You had a plan. Yes. Yep. My plan. I was going to make uh, braces for blacksmithing. Yep. Still going to do that. But Anders pointed out to me last week a very good point, which is that if it was just a bracer, it's very possible that a piece of hot iron could go down it. And because it's laced on, yeah, I'm going to end up with quite nice burns on the inside of the bracer. Yeah, unless you block it from going in, yeah. Exactly. So what I'm going to do, I've got a very old tunic Yeah. that I'm going to sew some leather on the sleeves, which are fairly short sleeves, Yeah. and then have them button on to the outside of the bracer. Oh, you should be able to do that, yeah. Yeah, no, I just need help editing the, or, uh, yeah. yeah, editing the tunic, basically. Yeah, I think we can do that. We will That'd play awesome. and figure it out. Um, I got Prudence sending me some questions too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of them was, yeah, about the trolls. I know they're not Viking. Carl, you're the Norwegian. What is the history of trolls in Norway? Every souvenir shop you see has them. Uh, um, there were two Norwegian... Uh, Fairy tile collectors called Osbjörnsen and Moore collected all these uh, folk fairy tiles. And uh, it's uh, printed in three books, I think. So it's about this big on your bookshelf. Uh, and most of these folk fairy tiles has to do with trolls. Uh, trolls, the way they work in this particular mythos, uh, they can smell the, the blood of Christians. Uh, they <laughs> immediately turn to stone if the, light sh uh, if the light shines on them. Uh, they are often multi-headed and occasionally argue with themselves. Uh, and they are really, really dumb. <laughs> a bit like the one in Lord of the Rings? Mm, yes. Yeah, that's a pretty... Well, the ones that turn into rocks and... Yeah, but he gets some of his uh, inspiration yeah. <laughs> from North mythology. Some, oh my word! The whole thing. Yeah. Okay. This is later. <laughs> it might be what the Jutner evolved to when we became Christian. Mm. Uh, for those who don't know what the Jutner are, what are they? That's your side of the body. <laughs> Somebody I, said you were falling yeah. asleep, so we're trying to keep you busy. <laughs> the Frost giants. giants, frost giants. What did you say? Giants. Yeah, frost giants and giants. Okay. And then um, the uh, there's some stories I like, like uh, the if you're driving along the valley, for example, from between Voss and here, there's huge, huge, huge rocks, like bigger than houses um, on side of the valleys, along with little rocks mm. and such. And they look like they've just rolled off the mountain. But uh, there's a saying that the trolls were having a fight. Yeah, that's yeah. a very typical way to uh, explain out of place big rocks. Uh, the real explanation is most most of the time that will be the Ice Age. Sometimes it's um, spectacular avalanche. Um, I think yes, I understand that. <laughs> uh, but, no, you uh, didn't. <laughs> uh, for instance, back home uh, there is one of uh, there is uh, on an island there is a beach of. Uh, stones that are falling from the mountain, but most of them are about the size of a fairly large uh, kitchen table. But then there is one that is humongous, that is just lying on top of all of this. And when you're standing next to this stone, looking at a particular mountain, you can see a similar stone on top of that mountain. So obviously the story goes that uh, the troll of the island, Barbatrolle, uh, had um, 
uh, argument with the troll of the other mode, the mainland mode. And they end up throwing stones at each other. And the Barma troller, the troll of the island, is a little bit stronger, so he can throw the stone all the way and hit the other guy. But the other troll wasn't quite that strong, so he throws at the top of the mountain, but it lands down by the down by the shore. Uh, you have these weird geological things that need explanation. You also have a phenomenon called Igette Greta, uh, giant cauldron. I like that one. You get them along rivers when a stone gets to kind of work around in a circle for a very, very, very long time. Then it makes this round uh, pit in the mountain that kind of looks like a cauldron. Uh, and that can be very, very big, as in tons of meters across. I'll interrupt for half a second. Those of you from Minnesota, Devil's Kettle is one of those. Okay. <laughs> and uh, this will obviously cause speculation because the rock is usually uh, either become so small that it's just flushed away, or it doesn't occur to people that the rock at the bottom can actually have caused the uh, cauldron to begin with. So, uh, yet the greater giant cauldron. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume that they are meant for uh, preparation. Hmm. There's two pretty cool uh, troll folk lords local to this area. Yeah. I don't know whether anyone wants to hear them, but I thought I'd mention them anyway. Yeah, go for it. Uh, one is towards Voss. So where oh, I live. yeah. And uh, as you're driving from Goodvangen to Voss, you go oh, past so cool. a stretch of river where you have several extremely large boulders. Yeah, 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 I'm sure. That's all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> you get some really large um, boulders. And these are, according to the local folklore, the remains of trolls that got caught out in sunlight. And the reason they got caught out in sunlight is because supposedly they were trying to build a bridge across the river. Uh, trolls are not particularly known for being good craftsmen, so they kept failing quite drastically, shall we say. And they were trying to build this bridge, and it kept collapsing on itself quite often. And so it took them all night to be able to build this fairly simplistic very sketchy bridge and the reason they were building this bridge is to try and have quick and easy access over to the waterfall on the other side of the river the waterfall Tvinafossa. this waterfall according to the folklore also grants eternal youth and life if you drink it and so the trolls carl didn't know this apparently um <laughs> And the trolls wanted to drink from this because then they wouldn't actually have to worry about sunlight anymore. Anyway, short and long of it is that the sun comes up just as they're crossing the bridge. And so all of that work uh, went to waste because they were turned to stone anyway. Bridge collapses underneath them because of the stone weight. And that's why you end up with the Wait, trolls in the uh, water. Hmm? Uh. Liza wrote, I think it's a Conan game. Carl plays it. Uh, Conan Exiles. Yes. Yeah, that's what they wrote on there. Yes, I think Conan is game. Carl plays it. She writes up here, what's that um, automatically correct video game? Atomically correct. Oh, sorry. I thought it was to do with this, but no. Yeah, anatomically to correct I, I, video I, I, game. It is anatomically correct. It, yeah. in the, yeah. But it has nothing to do with the windows. No, was, but you can control the size. Then it's a slider. Yes. It's Conan Exiles. <laughs> Did I interrupt your story? I forgot. You were saying <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm sorry I was distracted by the anatomically correctness <laughs> of Conan. <laughs> you need a moderator, that's for sure. <laughs> she does, she's doing a good job of moderating. Um there was, yeah, the kids are in the black phase right now. But if you know if they would have showed you the sweatshirts that they're wearing are from the valley. And Vikings apparently Viking enthusiasts, they like black hoodies. Uh so what? Face, you, like <laughs> you heard blackface, didn't you? Yes, I was wondering how the hell are you we are not racist the here. <laughs> the kids are but thank you for right taking now. it there. No, <laughs> no, no, the black face. Karen wishes she could control the size. Oh, I do. 
when he's <laughs> on your game you can control the size. Stop talking. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> anyway, the other story I have with trolls, uh, just to try and take some heat off of Carl here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there, uh, by the way, before you do, are there other names for trolls? I saw an L ask. Oh, another. Uh, are there any? How many different words for trolls are there in Norse? At least a yatra troll. Uh, I can't come up with any more. Yeah. Off the top of my head. Yep, the troll. Uh, Risa or yatra. Yatta, I think, is more typically Swedish, but it's used a little bit in Norwegian. I think it more easily translates to uh, giant, but it's occasionally used about troll. Yeah. Okay, your story. This, <laughs> this story is um, a slightly different version, but this is more localized to Goodvanger. And in this particular story, you have a troll woman who falls in love with a mortal man. And they actually begin dating, and they keep dating for many, 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 many decades. And because of her troll nature and troll magic, she's able to keep him alive far longer than the span of years of a mortal man should have. And they continue dating for many many years but he never proposes marriage to no, her and she wants to get married and eventually she gets quite annoyed at this to the point that one day she thinks well stop it i'm gonna i'm gonna be the one to propose to him and so she does this and he immediately says no and this makes her so mad that she reaches down and she is one of the old giant, uh, trolls so she is very very large trolls are never meant to stop growing and so she reaches down and she grabs a pile of uh, rocks and soil and basically grabs this massive boulder from the ground in this area and she hurls this at her former I think we can safely say former at this point <laughs> uh, boyfriend and it hits him with such force that it actually manages to gain orbit. And this is supposed to also be how the moon was formed. And for those who aren't aware, the anorthosite rock, the white stone we have in this valley, is actually the same uh, material that makes up the surface of the moon, for mm. the most part. I'm having serious trouble believing that this is an old fairy tale. I'm. I also think it's unlikely to be an old one. I would be surprised if it's more than six years older than me. Because, really? Because uh, people you didn't are... know that the moon uh, was made mostly of a north site until 1969. No. So you're 84. How old are you? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you said it's six years older than you, so I'm just left to guess yes, here. I would say that this story would have to be made sometime after 1965. Uh, 69. He's 45, <laughs> not 84. But you have an uncanny way of changing your age. Notice this now. See, he looks younger here now, but if we take the top back and he's just the gray is exposed, all of a sudden he got a lot older. Yeah. Look, look, look. He's like 80 now. <laughs> I figured out how he does it. <sighs> Um, she thought she was ready. For, yeah, um, Raymond writes in here. Uh, she thought she was ready, ready for a marriage, but uh, he was just trolling her. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I like that one. Okay, so I did do this. I was to show you something here, but I kind of stupidly uh, went ahead. I said I was going to be ready to make the thumbs, and I'd show how to do it, but I went too far. There and I have to undo it. Okay, so if I were to two of us yeah, oh yeah, yeah, no, this on. is this is where I shine. I can't do history, but I can do this. Okay. So if I make a thumb hole for him, he's not yeah, ready for really it now, been but doing history, we've been doing if you take, Yeah, <laughs> that's true. We do uh, okay. This if you take the working end, this is the end I'm working on, and you put it around his thumb. Let's see, hold your thumb out the way I did before and pinch like that. And then you count the amount of stitches that go around his thumb. I had 15. And then you will split that number up a little bit. So I took nine 
here, and then I'll six there. So you make, like, there's, I took nine here, and there's six there. So the two together become 15. So you make a chain. I don't wish you just to confuse the other needle nope. binders. So the other needle chain. binders will get this. And then I pick up further ahead. Yeah, but you, you're going to have to learn this next year. So, or this oh, that's year. right. Yes, because I'm going to teach him how to needle bind, and he's going to teach me how to sword fight yes. when it's warm enough to be outside. So. And light enough, too, because it's it's still way too dark at 7 o'clock to even be outside. But I will help teach you with the sword fighting. Okay, so now I've done a couple of stitches to attach it. So that's a thumb hole. But I like to check it before I go too far because right now I would have a little less here, maybe a little more here. But it's not my hand it goes on, so you have to try it on now. So it's technically a thumb hole. But yeah, on this one I'd probably take a few less stitches on top and maybe take a couple more in the bottom. But you, when you, you try it on right after you do it, uh, and then make any adjustment as needed and do the same thing on the other arm before you forget. That's how I make my thumb holes, somebody asked. And yeah, it's still really black at night. Yeah, he's also Norwegian hair, alder cover. Uh, we do have enough light at six o'clock that we can be outside, but it would be dark within 15 minutes mm -hmm. or too dark to film. Yeah. I did find out though, and this is a little plug because I never remember to say click like and subscribe and tell your friends and all that crap. Um, there's actually a bonus for hitting a thousand subscribers. Mm -hmm. I did not know this, but if I have a thousand subscribers, we can actually send from a phone, which has much better quality than my computer outside there in the mountains should show up better. So if we hit the thousand before April, I think mm -hmm. then we can start filming with the with the phone outside. Yep. So little plug, hit subscribe if you have it. Um, I have another thing. It's not a plug. I swear to God, Carl, it's not a plug. Valentine's Day is tomorrow. <laughs> which so is Mother's a, Day. Mother's Day too. Yeah, in Norway is. Uh, and yet, when is it in England? My birthday, March fourteenth. March fourteenth. Yeah. This year. And there you go. Well, it was I think the day after I had my kids. But anyway, I, I don't really do. Valentine's Day personally because my kids are born on Valentine's Day so it's more better to have it as their birthday so but this had me thinking about Vikings obviously they didn't have Saint Valentine but uh, do they do something uh, in the similarity yeah they threw axes at women whose hair's been pinned to the <laughs> oh then we saw in the TV in the movie Vikings with Kirk Douglas uh, what was explain a little bit better please somebody who <sighs> They took a woman who had been accused in the film of being an adulterer, something else that uh, is questionable in and of itself, and they put her into what looked like a medieval-style stockade. Well, she very much was an adulterer. She was banging uh, Kurt Douglas. We know that, but they weren't supposed to know that. It's not for certain. It says he was so hot then, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he had been talking out of school. He mm. could have been, could have been. yeah. <laughs> he seemed to find the entire thing really amusing, so maybe. So not Valentine's Day worthy, but he did save her. Continue, <laughs> he did, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so they put her into this stockade after they had braided her hair into three strands. And then they One, nailed two. the three strands three. to the board of the stockade. So oh, you wait. had. Keep going. Let's reenact this sucker. Carl, get an axe. <laughs> Let's not reenact this. Sucker. Okay, so yes, you were saying. <laughs> so one braid was nailed up here, one braid was nailed to the side over here, and one over here. Okay. And then to prove whether she was uh, guilty or not, you throw <laughs> axes at the braids. And the idea is that if you manage to cut all three, thank God she hasn't got an axe. <laughs> I missed. Remember, Remember miss, yeah. you miss with all three. Um, yes. Um, okay, hold it. Uh, if you, if you. <laughs> so, if you manage to cut the braid, she's innocent. If you hit her in the head, like Karen just did to me, guilty and dead. And if she, if she had missed three times, then they drown her. You've been cheating, though. I hit you dead in the head. Yeah, you did. Yeah. 
Maybe How could should... I be cheating on me? I probably shouldn't have French braided your hair. Yeah. <laughs> so that it's to be <laughs> diplomatic about it, I must say I don't know what sources uh, the movie makers uh, used for this, so I can't really say anything sensible about the authenticity of this practice. <laughs> Uh, but we did okay. So and another thing here too. Um, now I'm completely off the Valentine's Day thing or the symbolism or whatever. Um, we did have another movie that we watched last week uh, that we need to another Viking. It had Vikings in it. It's uh, Pathfinder. When the heck was that? For? Carl's gonna die. Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> okay, when was the movie from? Does anybody remember? No. Pathfinder. It was Amer It was an American Indian or at least Native. Indians from uh, the Americas. I'm not sure that you can actually call that anything Viking related. The, it's just... Apparently the Norsemen had found their ways to the shores and the they were not very nice to the natives and the natives fought back. Of course not. No Spoiler way. alert, they win. But anyway, um, what's, go ahead you two, rip it to shreds because I know we were laughing the whole way through. <laughs> Where do you begin, Carl? Go ahead, Carl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Clothing, armor, and weapons is uh, completely off the wall. But uh, I have to say, not much worse than uh, normal. A little bit worse than normal, but not that. Mm, the amount of horns I saw on helmets, I would say it goes beyond uh, a little bit worse than normal. Okay, so. No, no. Uh, normally, they get everything wrong. They just do it more moderately wrong. They don't go completely Wagner wrong. Uh, okay. They are uh, making the Native Americans into mentally challenged hippies, and the Vikings are uh, super brutal. Their basic strategy is to completely genocide this continent before we move here. <laughs> um, yeah, that sounds like a plan. They wanted the land, and they're very, very good at the winter. Yes, but also. There are Native Americans who should know the terrain. Keep getting surprised by Vikings on horseback that just jumps out of the shrubbery in front of them. Where did the horses come from? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> by considering the size of the Viking ships, I'm guessing they had like a hundred of them on board. On that deck. Oh, was it that? the yeah. slave chamber oh, that's with right. all the chains. Mm -hmm. And uh, how good was the armor, Carl? Oh, yes, how was no, the armor? It, was, it had no effect whatsoever. And they actually make a point on it in the movie. Oh, we can't fight this man because they wear iron armor and your flint arrows will do nothing. And then immediately afterwards, they kill like 12 Vikings by shooting them with flint-headed arrows. <laughs> True dawn. And the weapons, because apparently the sword was the big thing that... They all the natives should be afraid of because yeah, no, because uh, if you are the only Viking that are left behind and raised by Indians and you are the proud owner of the only sword of the, the North American continent, you will immediately just intuit how it works and you will understand by osmosis how to use it to kill warrior people who has come to genocide you. Mm. Of course. Oh, and of course, uh, by having this sword you immediately gain the ability to breathe underwater while holding the sword so that you can spring up and you can impale someone in a surprise attack. Of course. <laughs> um. The Vikings also are completely unfamiliar with the concept of ice, spring and avalanches <laughs> because we don't have that here. You have to go to America to really, exactly. to really get the experience on it. Oh, yeah. oh, and incidentally, the filmmakers couldn't work out whether they wanted it to be summer, winter, or spring. Oh, yeah, it was all seasons it in one day. It jumped from one season to the next, every scene. Mm. Then there was the whole mountain climbing expedition. I'm not sure what that was about. Yeah, no, well, you see, if you're walking on a very narrow ledge, and people keep falling off this narrow ledge because they're idiots, it be tie everybody together on the one rope. Yeah, and then when they start falling off. Then you just apathetically look at it, and you look at this child of dominoes coming towards you. And then you at least try to kill the nearest Indian before you fall off yourself. Hmm. This is good Viking strategy. Hmm. I see nothing wrong with it. No, no. There were a lot of saving moments. What else was there? Uh, oh, 
The legend must have been, I don't know. So, okay, so if I were to try to save the film, I'll say, okay, let's say that maybe, oh, and you're going to kill me for this one. What if this is how the natives um, portrayed or had envisioned the Norsemen uh, in their head and then told the story onward and onward on through generation after generation after generation, and it became a bit like the fish. How big is the fish? Every time you tell the story, the fish gets bigger and bigger. Oh, my uh, response is stop trying to save this film. It's not... <laughs> Well, first saving. off, we know that that's not what happened because this is uh, American remake of a Norwegian movie where it's uh, Sami people versus proto-Estonians and not uh, natives versus Vikings. Yeah. Secondly, if there was any such folklore among uh, uh, Native Americans, and mm -hmm. I can't say conclusively that there isn't because I, this is not my field. But I would say it would be very, very strange that I hadn't already heard about it, because if there is anything Viking reenactors would be shouting from the bloody mountaintops, it would be a story like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would say I'm pretty sure there is no such duck. And if a duck of that color shows up now, it will be a very suspicious duck, because it didn't show up sometime prior to this movie. Yeah. Yep. So Pathfinders, thumbs up, thumbs down. I would say, if we are operating with a, a writing system, I would put it extremely close to the bottom. Um, we've watched the Kirk Douglas one, and aside from the axe throwing thing, that's actually pretty good. Mm. I would say that's almost a benchmark for how to make a writing movie. See, yep. the right way in the ship, God damn you. Um, <laughs> So Nell brings up Norseman, by the way, which is called Viking on in Norwegian, and yes, I love it. Um, you watched one or two episodes, and we tried to identify co-workers in the audience, uh, because it's a bit like mixing Vikings and Office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I watched it. I liked it, but I watched it right after I watched Vikings, so it might be a case of perfect by comparison. Um I'll try again when I have a... Well, we were going to watch that again. It's so good. Uh, so I've noticed that some people are disgusted by it because one of the first things uh, one of the Vikings does is uh, take a coat from... Or he borrowed his uh, cape from a Roman. Uh, the Roman hasn't quite realized that he's a slave. Uh, and at some point he tries to get the cape back and the Viking finds a very disgusting way of saying, I don't think so. Um, and people sometimes get turned off right about that. You can look away at that point, but... But the thing is, there's two things. One, that is a Norwegian movie. Those are our TV series that are all Norwegians that are the actors, etc. And they actually do one scene in English, and then they do the same scene in Norwegian. They do they shoot it side by side. So it's uh, perfect, and they both come out at the same time. But the dialects you are hearing, unlike Vikings TV series, in Norsemen or Vikingana, as it's called, the, the dialect is Norwegian. Um, and the humor is very Norwegian. So it's a bit like... Yeah, I feel like office humor or Monty Python is in comparison mm -hmm. to uh, it's kind of a dryish humor, but uh, like uh, the Roman being very upset that he doesn't remember being part of a vote to come over. Uh, uh, he doesn't realize he's a slave yet, of course, and um, he doesn't like the way that they're being unfairly treated and thinks that they should create a union. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There was, uh, yeah, anyway, and of course, uh, the chieftain's way of dealing with him is just, <laughs> um, so you should definitely watch Viking on if you haven't seen it. Is ah, you're an artist here, by the way. Viking on is satire on modern Norwegian society through the filter on uh, Viking cliches, the Vikings cliche. Uh, it's almost sad, but it's actually quite good when it comes to costumes. Uh, that speaks volumes, unfortunately. That's what you were saying, yeah. No, uh, compared to Vikings, mm -hmm. it is a more accurate representation <laughs> of the Viking Age. And this is not meant to do that at all. <laughs> Look what you did, Bjornada. Uh, it's also shot in Avaldsnes and in Bora. Season 3 was done in Bora. Uh, if you do get pretty far in uh, Season 1, you'll notice Freya's necklace. I'm not going to ruin it for you, but I love it and I need one. Uh, Nell was asking... Um, or no, not now, but Eliza wanted to know if I had the book with one needle. Yes, I do. It's in Norwegian. Uh, this is a really good one. It's one of my favorites. It's by Mary Pasanen. So this one and uh, this one. 
actually this way too. These too, I would recommend because they have different stitches in each one. One does more history, one is more practical use, but they both cover quite a bit. So this one, needle binding, what in the world is that? Or null binding. And then this one is with one needle. These are really good. And they also have different stitches in one, so you won't be overlapping completely. And then you have Maria Heels. You can download these now, they're eBooks. But they're a little how to make a wrist warmer, how to make, you know, this is Christmas. Whoops, I'm going slow here. Anyway, but there's a bunch of different ones in there in different languages. So that's a real quick, quick plug there. Another one asked is if my kids have each a different cake. Yeah, but they're gonna, yeah, they have to. They get to, well, cause I don't make them. <laughs> they have to make their own damn cake. I just buy the ingredients. So Greg does the baker today. I've never made this particular type of cake. So red it's velvet. Be very red velvet cake. I've never yeah. made it. Or, or cake pops. Yeah. Never made either of these. So this could be an interesting You can do mess. it. Um, I wanted to make cake pops. So what I understand is you basically make the cake. So red velvet be it this mm. time. And then you just mash the shit out of it and make little balls. And you do something after that. And I don't know what that is. But... Good luck, Brit boy. <laughs> Maybe you should just follow the recipe and don't listen to her. Yeah. <laughs> I burnt pizza yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you had to eat it. <laughs> How badly burnt was it, Carl? To put it like that, when we are at minus five degrees indoors, because I can't let light the fireplace to save my life. <laughs> Uh, and we are trying to heat up by getting some food, and you cost about as much smoke again. When the phone call to the owners of the house involves, if I can't turn the smoke alarm off, will the fire department show up? Because that's quite expensive. <laughs> and the owners of the house have so many houses that I have absolutely no idea how to deal with it in this particular house. So my boss owns the house. <laughs> So basic instruction is go around and poke things and hope it does something. But no, the fire brigade won't show up. So we're okay. Yeah, the burnt pizza is good pizza. Uh, and it gives a good singing voice, according to my mother. Yeah. Eating burnt things. Adrian, ah, yeah. Oh, no, that's the thing. My cooking is just like your mom's, apparently. So <laughs> don't say anything to your daughter. <laughs> um. Alberta Think says, am I talking cake pops? Yeah, they're going to try to make cake pops. So that'll be interesting. Um, there are certain ingredients that are hard to find in Norway, though. So he's going to do it. <laughs> I'm just going to. Yeah. And it's also very hard to follow a shopping list by mm -hmm. buying Englishman when you're buying things in a Norwegian convenience store. Buttermilk. We don't have buttermilk in uh, Norway. But we found out to actually do a lot of Google. Kultur milk is probably the closest. Mm -hmm. Or Sirnet milk. Sharna milk and distilled so vinegar. Distilled vinegar. What in the hell is distilled vinegar? Is that seven percent or thirty-five percent vinegar essence? I don't know. We'll find out. Oh, okay. uh, mix the. Oh, here we go. Drea says mix the made cake with cream cheese to form into balls. Refrigerate and uh, dip into melted candy chocolate or almond bark. Okay, so we didn't get melted candy chocolate, but we did get powdered sugar or powdered Oh, I chocolate. got white chocolate. He's smart. That's than why you. he's. Mom. That's why he's making the cake. <laughs> yep. But we did get cream cheese and to form into balls and stuff. So okay, that will work. Uh, Albert writes, or is it Albert or Adrian? I can't remember which one. Adrian. Anyway, he says I think they were talking about they were taking the piss at the Vikings with the main characters, because when I was applying to the show, I had to have historical clothes, which I have to be a background character. Yeah, the season three. Um, well, the season one and two, I think, is Ovalsness. Uh, and has a lot of characters from the Bear, a lot of people from the Bergen area. There's a lot of Viking reenactors in there from Norway. So if you know any of them, you'll recognize them real quickly. And then the third season was done in Borda, which is near Horten. And uh, that one we know quite a few people as well. We were going to do that actually, but it uh, involved several weeks that we couldn't. It is Albert. Okay. Albert will set. Charlotte's just focusing on what the balls part of the cake pops. So nearly that over time. odd. <laughs> We're not making cake balls. We're making cake pops. <laughs> then say that instead of <laughs> balls. Uh, I couldn't help but join because I wasn't close enough to be there. Yeah, that's the thing. I was going to try to do that too, but Horton is on the other side of the fjord. 
so I couldn't make it. Oh, you're trying to plug. I'm stealing traffic because my phone has decided to die on me. So we will be back Saturday. Uh, well, without it, Saturday at the same time. Uh, probably indoors because I don't think the sun will be back by then. These girls, if they show their heads, will be 12. They're 11. Their last day that they're 11 now. Uh, so happy Valentine's birthday to you guys. They said that as well. I saw. Mm -hmm. So if anything else you want us to talk about or tortured Carl with or any more smytho Norse mythology, authenticity, please. <laughs> For the uh, movies. Yeah. I would... Uh, Put uh, Kurt Douglas in for uh, nine on a scale to one to ten, yeah. and Pathfinder in for two. Okay, I think that theoretically can be made a less authentic Viking movie than Pathfinder, but I've yet to see it. Hmm. What about the uh, Vikings, the Roman, the Romanian or Russian version from 2016? Uh, mm. That's uh -huh. on YouTube, actually. <laughs> the Russian one. You know, with it, the monk. Yeah, it. it <laughs> It commits some horrendous crimes to physics and uh, Newton's laws, but not so much to authenticity. No. Not as bad, at least. They do reenact the Balrog scene with Gandalf. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> they do. <laughs> no. Anyway, so we're at one hour, so we'll leave you. Come back and play with us tomorrow. <laughs> or next Saturday. Next Saturday. Don't listen to me. <laughs> and Bjorn Artis is the best thing. Um, any foreign have ever done regarding Vikings with respect for the style, clothes, history, etc. Yeah, is actually a Japanese manga cartoon called Vinland Saga. We have to find that. Yeah, it's not in. Okay. It's not been uh, dubbed yet. Oh, that's okay. Just so read we the just text. have to read the text. That's what I do. Yeah, I know. I, I just all I, the Norwegian. Very easy. I know it is. By the way, FYI, if you watch America, there's a lot of American television, English movies, etc. In Norway, they have them all, uh, and they're all texted. Anime. Anime. Aww. So that's a cartoon. Anime. Anime. That's so yes. cool. I love that. Oh, so Norwegians like text Sorry, on that's their that. movies. No, no, I remember he has shown me the comic version of this before. Mm -hmm. You guys got a lot of happy birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, there's an anime version of it now. Do we know what movie we're going to watch next? It. You can reach it. Uh, um, no. Forrest Hammer, maybe. We kind of need Runa for that one, don't we? We do need Runa for that one, yeah. Well, it's his movie. Has he watched it already? We will call him. Maybe we do Thor's Hammer. Something. Hammer of the Gods, maybe. <laughs> subbed versus dubbed. No. Uh, Germany apparently likes subs, but uh, or dubbed, but uh, Norwegians love subbed. I put dubbed. He means the comic version, by the way, Bjornarda. That's the one he meant. Mm. They're actually a cartoon version. That's awesome. I don't. I just like to be able to see what's going on. Bye. Say goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs> and stream. It's only on the some shows where I like it when it's done. And. Unfair. <laughs>